Over the years, I've had a ton of clients tell me that they're worried about hair loss when they see clumps of hair in the shower or in the sink or in their brushes. Luckily, there are some hair care habits you can use to cut down on hair loss and there's some not so obvious things that can be causing your hair loss. So let's get into it and save your hair. Things that reduce hair loss. When I first opened my salon, my co-founder Leslie was dealing with a ton of breakage and hair loss. You can see here, she didn't have nearly as much hair back then, but within the first year of us being open and having stylists take care of her hair every single week, she had a lot more hair. As you can see here, and now with all this hair, she's like a woolly mammoth. If they were smaller, nicer, never mind. And it wasn't just Leslie who had a lot more hair. By the end of our first year, it got to the point where every time we had another one of our clients say, it feels like I have a lot more hair. Am I going crazy? And we'd all laugh and some of my styles would even brag about how they had these magic fingers that grew their clients' hair when they were doing scalp massages. We kind of became known for that. Not known for magic fingers, because that sounds kind of bad, but for improving the length and thickness of our clients' hair. Now, most of that thickness came from my healthy hair routine, the Trinity Method. You don't need to come into my salon to get that. I give it away for free in my videos. But believe it or not, there actually is some science behind the magic fingers because a good scalp massage can activate your hair follicles. But before you go give yourself a 30 minute scalp massage with your magic fingers, that sounds so bad. Let's get honest. Truth is my thing. And I'm not going to sit here telling you that massaging your scalp is going to turn you into a chia pet or something like that. That's not real. Anyone who says to focus a lot on scalp massages for hair growth is selling you a load of garbage. Like the time that I convinced my stepsister the Mountain Dew actually came from a mountain. That's a true story and she was actually in high school. Anyway, scalp massages are just one small piece of the puzzle, but the truth is you might as well do them anyway because it also helps with scalp health. And scalp health is important to everyone. It's a really big deal. Your follicles can get so frustrated that they just flat out quit and that means that they stop growing hair. And if enough of your follicles do that, hair loss, hair thinning, nightmare scenario, you get it. It's rare, but it's still really, really bad and you want to avoid it. So what I recommend to my clients is that they add the scalp massage to their normal hair washing routine so it prevents all of those terrible things and gives you all the benefits of a scalp massage. And it goes like this. When you're washing your hair, you wanna use the pads of your fingertips instead of your palms going all wishy-washy. Because the wishy-washy thing doesn't really get in there and clean everything. Imagine you're trying to clean some dishes, but you aren't able to actually see the dishes. It's gonna be really hard to get them clean, right? But that's exactly what you're doing when you wash your hair. You can't visually see any of the oil and buildup you're trying to clean off your scalp. That's why I always tell my clients to assume that their scalp is dirty everywhere because it is dirty everywhere. It's not like you have some oil here and some there. You have multiple layers of oil all over your scalp. The only way you can get rid of those layers of oil is to physically break them up by getting in there with the pads of your fingertips. Wishy-washy isn't going to do it. Think of the oil almost like peanut butter that doesn't want to come off very easily. That's what you're working against. And for all of you out there that are like, my hair still gets oily on day two, Chris. I love you, but you cannot do this Michael Jackson wishy-washy thing and just be like, I'm done. It's not that easy. If you're not really getting in there, you're not really getting the oil and buildup, which means your scalp health is going to suffer and you risk your hair follicles quitting on you, which means hair loss. At the same time, that does not mean you should be super aggressive and irritating your scalp and scratching it. Don't use your fingernails at all. This is not some wrestling match. You want to press firmly, but gently. Your head should move a little bit, but not too much when you go back and forth. If you really want, you can try using one of these scalp scrubber type things. They've gotten really popular because they look really good in the videos on TikTok. And let's be honest, it's a lot of fun to buy new stuff and try it out so you can take better care of your hair. I get excited when I buy new underwear. Gamers get excited when they get a new game. Billionaires get excited when they get a new wife. No shame, makes total sense. But these are not as good as your fingers. If you wanna use it because it's new and fun, like I said, go for it. Just make sure that you use your fingers before or afterwards so you get everything clean. All right, now that we've covered scalp health, we can move on to the more advanced stuff. But first, 
I want you to ask yourself, what type of hair loss do you actually have? A lot of people just aren't sure, so let's go over the signs. If you're struggling from breakage and that's the source of your hair loss, the hair that you see on the bathroom counter or floor or whatever will be on the shorter side. Now, of course, there's still gonna be some full length hairs on your brush and on the floor and stuff like that too. But if you see a bunch of hairs falling out that are this long and your hair is this long, it's breakage. And if you have hair loss from breakage, you can help prevent that with the Trinity Method. It's a healthy hair routine that will get your hair strong and healthy and in great condition pretty quickly. If you're interested in that, you can check out my recommended product list in the description. It'll walk you through the entire thing. The other category of hair loss is hair shedding. And this is when the hair falls out at the follicle. So you'll notice this full length hair in your brush or on the counter or whatever. This is different. It's not like the short little hairs that you got from breakage. It's all long. And when I talk about this, the question is always how much hair shed is normal? How do I know if I'm losing too much hair and it's thinning or is this normal? And if you try to Google an answer to that question, it will give you absolutely terrible advice. But please do not listen to that. It's total garbage. Do not let it freak you out. Like I'm losing the wrong amount of hair. There's no such thing. And if you see some Buzzfeed quiz called what celebrity are you based on your hair loss? Yeah, don't take that either. Trust me when I tell you that I have cleaned a lot of brushes in my life. Probably enough to fill up an entire garbage truck. And I'm talking about the ones that compact it and then compact it again. It's been a lot of hair, man. Trust me. I get to see exactly how much hair my clients are shedding. And I also get to see if their hair is getting thinner or not over the years. And what I've learned is that everyone sheds a different amount of hair. It is all over the place. I have clients who are even sisters and one sheds way more than the other. The amount of hair that you shed has nothing to do with hair thinning or hair loss or any of that because my clients who shed the most hair usually have the thickest and fullest hair out of all my clients. So please do not go by how much is coming out. And if that does happen to you and you see a whole lot more shedding than normal, it's super important that you do something about it as soon and as fast as possible. Because a lot of the time you can prevent or do something to reverse it if you catch it early. And a quick warning when I say to do something about it, I don't mean try home remedies for six months while it gets worse and then there's nothing you can do about it because you waited so long. No, if you're watching this, you care about your hair and you do not have six months to waste on grapefruit and apple cider silliness that you saw on TikTok. The real key here is to find the cause of your hair loss because there are a bunch of different reasons that you might be losing your hair. So let's go over the most common issues and talk about how you can fix them. All right, anxiety is a big cause of hair loss. If you're stressed, depressed, or going through a hard time in general, your mental state can absolutely affect your physical body. And trust me, I am not some woo-woo person, like you gotta get your chakras aligned or whatever, but I'm telling you that I have seen up close firsthand the stress can cause hair loss. The good news is that I've also seen the hair come right back after the stress or anxiety was gone, mind and body are connected. Don't ask me how, but I promise you it's true. You gotta take care of yourself. I know that's easier said than done, but you can't take care of your family and friends unless you take care of yourself first. You owe it to them to do that. Nutrition can be another huge cause. If your nutrition is off, your body doesn't have the basic building blocks that it needs to be able to even make your hair. And when I say nutrition, I do not mean eat salads and kale and celery. I mean that you need to eat food with calories, not rabbit food. Back when I was in college, I was in the fitness industry for a little bit and I got to know women who competed in these like bikini shows and competitions and stuff like that. And when it was time for the local competition, they would go on some crazy 16 week diet and that diet was really hard on their bodies. But after 16 weeks of egg whites and cardio, they would have like literally half the hair that they started with. That's why a lot of competitors use extensions. And don't think for a second that this only applies to fitness people. This applies to a lot of women that I know that eat very, very little. I think they probably get more calories from wine than they actually do from food. And if you're doing that, you just aren't giving your body what it needs to actually produce hair. Again, there's good news with this one in that it's completely reversible. Once the competitors started eating normally again, the hair comes back 
everything goes back to normal. The learning here is that your body needs food. So please eat real food, not like two of those egg bites from Starbucks in the morning. Eat food, your hair will thank you. Medical conditions can also cause hair loss. You can have a thyroid issue or low iron or hormone imbalance and have no idea why you're losing so much hair. These types of things are not obvious at all. Unless you're in medicine, you probably have no idea what the signs are. To solve this, I would really see a dermatologist who specializes in hair loss. Physical trauma is another reason you could be losing a lot of hair. A serious car wreck or undergoing some type of major surgery or even giving birth can really stress out your body. Basically what happens is your body says, look, we're in a really bad spot here. Emergency, we gotta conserve all resources to make sure that we stay alive. And this whole beautiful long hair thing is not really necessary. So your body stops producing hair for a little bit, which can get kind of scary. The good news again is that the hair comes back as your body recovers. It might just take some time to get all the length back, but it will come back. A certain virus that I don't want to get banned for saying could also cause a lot of hair loss. Some people who get it end up losing a decent amount of hair and it can even degrade the overall health of your hair. It can look kind of weird and stringy and just not as strong. But the good news is that this is totally temporary. It may not feel temporary in the moment. I get it. It's a terrible thing to go through, but it will grow back and go back to normal. It usually takes six to nine months for your body to get back to normal and grow the length back. So hang in there everything will be fine. Some medications can cause hair loss, but that does not mean I'm telling you to stop taking medication willy nilly. Super important that you talk to your doctor before you do anything like that. It can be really hard to pinpoint a medication because it can be everything from cholesterol meds to birth control, to blood pressure, to antidepressants. So again, like I said, I would check with a dermatologist. Genetics can unfortunately also play a big part in hair loss, and this has nothing to do with your hair habits or your daily life or anything like that. Just like there's male pattern baldness, there's also female pattern baldness. The good news is that there's medications to prevent this. So as soon as you notice it, run straight out and go to your doctor and ask them for help. This is not a situation where you can wait like 10 or 15 years and then come back and be like, mm, maybe I'll take that medication now. No, it's probably gonna be too late. Age is also a big factor. My mom will sit around every time we visit and we'll go through these old photo albums of her when she was back in her 20s and she'll say, oh my gosh, look how thick my hair used to be. And every time I tell her that it's totally normal for your hair to thin as we age, she doesn't believe me. There's just no way you could have the exact same hair from your 20s when you're in your 60s now. It's just not realistic. At the same time, don't get me wrong because it doesn't mean that you can't have good hair. You can absolutely have good hair in your 60s. Do not feel like you need to cut it or you can't grow long hair. That's not true at all. All right, so hopefully if you're experiencing hair loss, one of those causes got your attention and you're like, oh, now I know what the root cause is and now I know how to fix it and make it better. But if you don't and you're still kind of lost and not sure what to do, here's what I would do if I were in your shoes. I would make an appointment with a dermatologist that specializes in hair loss, make sure they have that specialty because those are the people that can really get into the nitty gritty and order blood tests and that type of stuff to really get to the bottom of everything for you. All right guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. If you're going through hair loss, my heart goes out to you. I know it's not fun. Hang in there, figure it out. I wish you the best. Have a good one.